Alexa is showing us and our little ones how to make a little wee indoor garden. I am a registered dietitian and I help parents teach their little ones how to eat foods and I help parents introduce food allergens to their little ones. But today I have my special guest, Vanessa, who's also a really good friend of mine. She is a PhD in ecology and evolutionary biology. So she's a scientist and a data analyst, but she's taking a break from her job search right now to show us how to actually properly plant our little garden inside. Um, I just wanna let everybody know that this video will, la will last on my Facebook page forever, as well as the associated blog post. So even if you're not joining us live right now, you can uh, watch the video at any time. And just a heads up, this video does go along with a blog post. So if you miss anything, everything that we're talking about is also in the blog post. Plus, Nessa's offered to answer questions on this video thread as you start sprouting at home. So I'm gonna let Vanessa take it away and show us how to get started. Yeah, perfect, Sue. Um, we have things with introductions. I actually don't think I'm gonna add anything to that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> make me sound smarter than I am, I think. You are. And you're like a fantastic plant mama. Look at your little wee plant babies. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd be fitting to put um, some of my plants in the background for this. So, um, yeah, I'll get started. So, um, yeah, as Sue said, I do have a background in plant biology, but I think more importantly, I really like growing plants at home and growing plants indoors. And I have a small condo with a balcony, so I've gotten um, pretty good at figuring out how to uh, grow plants inside with the limited resources that I have. And then um, now that they're all kind of forced to stay indoors, it becomes even more critical that we can use materials from around our house or from the grocery store, um, you know, rather than having to go to the hardware store or Home Depot to pick up all those supplies. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, I'm going to break this up into two parts. The first part is to talk about the possible materials that can be used for this activity. Um, now, to try to make this as flexible as possible, I want to give you ideas for how you can use materials from around your house um, to use as the actual um, pot to hold the plant, different ideas for a substrate that you can use, and different ideas for how to get seeds or starting plant material for this activity. And then the second part, I'll show you um, a few different ways that you can combine those materials to get some plants growing at home. All right, so I'll just start with some ideas for the materials list. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can use to, as the pot to hold the soil or substrate to grow your plant in. Um, of course, you can just use a regular pot from a gardening store if you have one near you that's still open or from a home depot or whatever. Um, but there's also lots of um, kitchen items that you can use. Over the last week, I've collected a few yogurt containers. And I really like these because they also have the little base on the bottom that can be used to catch any excess water. Love that. Yep. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend in particular eats a ton of ice cream. Okay. And so I actually find that these, um, these containers, which also come with the lid, are actually really perfect for growing plants as well. Perfect excuse to get ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I have some of these containers from uh, the olive section, or like the oh, yeah. uh, from my grocery store. And you can see I already have some um, oh, I like that. In, in here, but these also work really well. Does the lid help, Vanessa? Like with I don't know, creating a little micro environment. Yeah, for uh, these particular plants that I'm growing, I really want to give them a human environment. So yeah, you can see all this steam that's built up um, in there, which is perfect for this particular species, which I'm growing. Okay. Plus the um, kids can see this stuff as it's growing. Yeah, yeah, that's another reason I really like that. Um, you can, here's another one which has the clear walls. Um, there's like a bubble tea place near me that's still open. And you can Love see, it. and I'll talk about this one more, but it's perfect because you can see the plant roots and you can really watch it grow, which I think is, is really cool. Um, Another idea is to use egg cartons. These are really perfect for filling up this part here with soil um, and you can grow little seeds in 
there, so that works fine. And then I even tested out using toilet paper tubes, and I know these have been, um, hopefully everyone has their hands on <laughs> toilet paper. But I actually found these have worked really well as little pots of that too. So pretty much what I'll do is I'll cut one of these containers in half, and then I actually put like a little piece of paper on the bottom, oh, yeah. just so like the soil doesn't fall out. Yep. Um, but these work well too, and then for these I would place them in the tray, um, since obviously these don't have a bottom to them. So I'll move on to talking about substrates now. So this is the pretty much the soil that you can grow the plants in. Um, of course, uh, you can just go and pick up some soil like this from Canadian Tire. That's where I got that one. Um, but if you don't have soil, it's also totally okay to go out to your garden and use some of the soil from there too. Um, or from maybe a plant that you had already and it died. Um, it's totally fine to take that dead plant in <laughs> and throw it out and just keep the soil from that. Um, if you're going to reuse soil or use soil from outdoors and you're afraid of, you know, little bugs or organisms in it, um, one thing that I like to do is just pour some boiling water over the soil or just pop it in the microwave for, you know, two or three minutes. And um, I find that will get rid of any of those bugs or microorganisms. And so do you, just, do you just put it in like a glass bowl and then like nuke it? That's it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, if the soil is dry, put the water in because you don't want your soil uh, catching on fire in, in the microwave. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. So what ha that happened to me once where I brought an outdoor plant inside and like, I don't know what it's called, but I had a hundred fl flies that hatched. Yeah. <laughs> it <made> like a <laughs> <store>. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what comes in handy too. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then even you know, if you really can't get your hands on any soil and you live in a condo like I do, um, I already showed you guys this one, but this is just paper towel that I've stuffed it with. And while it's not going to work well for, you know, long-term plant growth, you won't be able to grow your bean in here for months and months. It works fine for, you know, a month long experiment like this. So, um, oh, and the last thing, I also like using mason jars. These work really um, uh, well too. And once again, it's seed fruit, so you can see roots and things like that. Mm -mm. So um, the last part of our materials list is uh, the seeds or starting starting plant material that we can use. Um, of course, this was going to work great if you can go to a hardware store and pick up seeds from there. Um, but in the case that you don't want to make a trip out to the hardware store, um, there's lots of things within your kitchen that you can use. Uh, so some examples for sources for seeds are things like dry beans that you can get at the grocery store. So I particularly like this one because it's a soup bean mix. And so you can get a variety of different bean species from that. And it's kind of cool to see how different types of beans will grow. Um, and yeah, course, I love the guy, you know, the dietitian and her beans. Like, <laughs> yeah, everybody has beans in their house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now. Of course, like I have split peas and lentils. These will all work great. Um, the only thing that won't work is if the beans are, are canned beans because they've been cooked already and so um, they won't germinate in that case. I didn't think that split, so I have lentils and I think I have yellow split peas, but for some reason I thought that's not going to work because they're like split or mechanically separated or something like that. I th um, some of them, yeah, through that process, some of the um, embryos might have gotten broken off, in which case, yeah, those won't germinate, but there's probably, you don't have to pick them out, just, um, you know, throw okay. a little bit extra of them in the soil, okay. and a few of them will germinate. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to grow lentil sprouts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you've made a, a couple recipes with chia seeds, but I think you probably have these too, but chia seeds also work really well. These are fun because they sprout quickly and um, you can use them in salads because they produce those really tiny um, sprouts that you find at the grocery store. Um, you can use sunflower seeds, um, pumpkin seeds, as long as they're not roasted. Um, and you can even use things like popcorn kernels as well. Uh, so that could be fun. You can also use uh, materials um, like plants that you find in the grocery store that are not so for example, I'm going to show you one variation where I use green 
green onion. And you simply need to save when you're cooking, save the, um, the roots from the green onion. And this will work with um, any kind of plants in the onion family. So yellow onions, red onions, you can use those, as well as related things like the garlic cloves. Sometimes if you keep these in the fridge for too long, you actually see them starting to sprout those green sprouts already. So garlic is another good one. Um, ginger. Oh, I didn't even think of garlic. And the little sprout is so tasty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> in BC, they actually sell like garlic sprouts. Yeah. Which yeah. I never even tried, and they're delicious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And then um, really anything in the potato family works well too. So potatoes, sweet potatoes, other types of roots like ginger, those all work. Um, when it, if you're trying to pick a potato specifically for this activity, you want to look for a potato that has the little eyes on it. So kind of those little dimples, because those are the points where the new plants are going to um, sprout from. Yeah. Uh, a couple other ideas. Um, carrot tops. I uh, have a few here. So um, I've already had these guys growing for about a week already. So you can just see that I saved the top of the carrot there. And then um, seeds from fruits also work really well. So one of the things I'm gonna to show today is um, an avocado, I have to grow an avocado, but um, you know, things from, I find peppers work really well. You can use citrus, so like orange and lemon, all of those will, will germinate and grow new plants. So the citrus, you mean the actual seed from, so when you're talking about the potato, you actually slice that eye, like a chunk of the potato. But when yeah. we're talking about like grapefruit, you're actually talking about the little seeds. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy you're doing the demo for the avocado seed because when I was looking on your on the blog, I was like, I don't know how, what I would I do with this avocado pit. So I'm happy you're, yeah. you're talking yeah. about that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, so in this next part, I'll walk through some of the ones, some of the examples that I put on the blog already, and then I'll add in a few extra ones. So I'll start with a couple ideas of um, growing plants when you have substrate like soil already. Um, so I actually have some plants that I started a week ago, and you can see that some of the ones I started were those are some of those green onions. So I have my ice cream container here. Um, I simply filled it with soil, um, poked some holes in, and put the green onions in. I did these guys two days ago, and then these are the ones that I have from about a week ago. Um, and I'll probably let them go a little bit longer before trimming them, but you can see, like, we already have some nice growth here that you can already start using for, for cooking. That's amazing. Um, for this particular one, actually, um, used a, um, like a toothpick to poke some holes in the bottom just to allow for drainage. But if you forget to do this, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, I also tried out some beans, as you can see here. I have a takeout container that I'm using. You can see I also tested out another style container, which is actually a beer can that I cut in half. This would also work well for like a water bottle. Uh, you obviously just want to be careful because the edges can be a little bit sharp for, for younger kids. And then I have some of my toilet paper rolls um, on the bottom here. And so for all the ones uh, growing here, I have some bean seeds from that soup mix that I showed you earlier. So um, I forget which each of these ones were, but I think you have some black eyed peas this one and I think this might have been a kid and then these guys I'm still waiting on them to sprout. Yeah I had no idea you could sprout dry beans. No idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and um if you're kind of kind of in a rush to do this or you want to see results a bit quicker, one thing that you can do is just soak those dry beans overnight for a day or two. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you but I've gone bean soaking to cook them before and I'll, I'll actually see them starting to sprout in the bowl because I'll, I'll, I'll leave them there for too long sometimes. <laughs> so you can do that if you want them to go a little bit quicker. 
Now, I'm also going to give you a few ideas for how to grow if you don't have any substrate. So, um, using paper towel is what I find works the best for that. So, I have my one example here, which I showed you already, where I used a bubble tea or a takeout container and um, take the lid off. I simply stuffed it with um, paper towel. These are the Pinto, these are Pinto beans that I did. And then I just shove the beans down the edge here so that I'd be able to really see the root structure. <clears throat> and in my opinion, this, that's really cool, but it's also a cool conversation to have with kids too, to talk about what those different parts of the plants um, do. You know, you have your leaves that do photosynthesis, the roots that soak up nutrients and water. Um, so I think that can be a really fun activity. Absolutely. And I actually remember, I don't remember much from kindergarten or pre-K. I don't even know. Did I go to pre-K? But I do remember growing like something like that, a bean. And I remember checking on it every day and it was so exciting. And I think right now, especially with all that's going on and having restrictions from going outside for long periods, if you don't have a, a yard yourself, I think this is such a great idea to teach kids about the life cycle and to have some piece of greenery and, and like growth inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a great, and it's great to see the roots, like you said. It's almost like, you know, something on the nutrition side of things, like the roots is kind of like our stomach and it nourishes, you know, our body. And so the roots are the base and our body is getting nourished from that. So yeah, no, I think that's great. Yeah, one variation that I did on this, actually I did it with these exact beans, but they outgrew it, is I actually got them started in a Ziploc bag with just some paper towel, and they grew really quickly in that, which is why I ended up moving that here, but yeah, that worked. Oh, that was the picture that's on the blog. <clears throat> yeah, that's the picture that's on the blog. That was these guys, and then they, okay. uh, they just outgrew, you see they've outgrown this too, so I might actually move these to soil um, in the next, week or two so that they keep growing. What I love about those is they're really nice and leafy green. And I think, especially if you have a little one that's fearful of green vegetables, this is a way for them to touch and care and smell and even like roll this, the leaves over their fingers, maybe give a little taste. Um, so it's not to say it's, it's going to make them vegetable lovers, but I think it's a nice <laughs> way to have an activity. Um, where they are interacting with like a green vegetable without having any pressure to eat it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and for the most part, these are, well, pretty much all of these are going to be safe to eat too. So if they um, try it out, it's going to be fine for them. The exception to that, I will say, is um, potatoes. If you do decide to grow potatoes in your home, um, you might know that if you find a potato that's green, you shouldn't, shouldn't eat it. Um, it's actually poisonous for you, but also the leaves and stem, uh, the potato can be poisonous. But otherwise, all the other materials um, are safe for you to eat. Yeah, I grew, so my little project this week is, I grew, I had these daikon, like Asian radish, and I, they had some greenery, so I put them in one of Ayla's little bowls, <laughs> and we've been watching them grow. I don't have anything in here, ah, where's my camera? But water, yeah. Um, so she was calling them her trees, <laughs> and we we tasted the leaf. We tasted a leaf today, and we smelt it, and uh, we said, her and I agreed that it tastes like celery. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you know what? Um, when I was getting ready to do this workshop, I was telling my mom about it, and she was like, "You know what you used to do when you were a kid?" She's like, "You would see carrot tops." And, and grow them in water in your bedroom. I was like, oh. <laughs> so actually, um, you know, kind of took over, but actually decided to replicate that. Um, <laughs> I've had these guys going for about a week. Very similar setup to you, where they're just in a takeout container of water. And when I started these about a week ago, um, I mean, you can see the point where they were cut when I bought them at the grocery store and they do have some new growth. And I agree, these ones actually taste like parsley to me too. Mm. Um, and you can see that they've started to grow some new roots here as well. So you can actually take this and you can take the one that you have too 
and put spray into soil if you wanted for it to continue to grow that root structure. So even if this doesn't have any roots, I could put that outside? Yeah, yeah. If you were to put that in, in soil and then harvest it at the end of, you know, in the fall, you'll probably have that, that you said it was a daikon? Yeah. Okay, well, um, that root, those roots will probably have grown back. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just have two others. I wanted to talk about the chia seeds. Um, and I decided to do these ones in a bowl with um, some paper towel here. But the way I've sprouted seeds in the past, I actually think works better than this, which is that I usually do them in the mason jar. Uh, so for these guys, I um, just simply sprinkle the bottom with chia seeds um, and I keep the paper towel damp. And uh, you can see this is about a week worth of growth. And I think these guys are ready to eat. I think I could put these on a salad tonight or on a sandwich and they'd be really good. <laughs> That's awesome. So it, you would do, what were you saying? You, you liked it in a mason jar. Would you put soil or paper towel? So when I, when I used to do this in a mason jar, and I think from now on I'll, I'll still continue to do the mason jar, is I put the seeds um, in at the bottom here, about a tablespoon of seeds, and I make a modification to the lid. Um, I will actually take this metal part out and I'll put like an old... Um, pair of panty holes, like a mesh okay. inside the top there. And so what will happen is every day I'll fill up the mason jar with, with water to get the seeds wet and make sure they, they get watered and everything. I'll let them sit for, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. And then because they have a mesh on it, I can just pour it out and the mesh will catch the seeds and the water will come out. Um, and I'll continue to do that every day. And uh, they'll grow very, in a very similar way as these guys, except you'll be able to see the roots and, and that kind of thing. And you don't need a paper towel for it. So when they start rooting and sprouting, do you continue to douse them in water and rinse it off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. guess you could, I don't know if I have pantyhose, but maybe I could use like a piece of paper towel and yeah. I could just remove it like and then put it back so it could breathe afterwards yeah yeah exactly kitchen, um, kitchen towel would work i mean if you're careful you can just uh pour the water off too that that works totally fine um and i think it was back in like the 60s or 70s people had chia pets i don't know if oh, you yeah, that's right. heard that before but that's, like that's, chia. How, that's how chia pets <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah yeah so, and then the last one I'll talk about is the avocado seeds, since um, you were curious about that. So, yeah, you can see I've already gotten started here with my avocado seed. And so, you can see I pretty much stabbed toothpicks into it. To, and what I will do is place it in something like a mason jar. And I'll fill up the water so that's about halfway up the seed. Um, so the bottom half of the seed will be submerged in water, and the top half will be where the plant comes out. Um, now, the tricky part about avocados is it's not always clear to know which side is the upside of the seed and which side is supposed to go down. So the way you can figure that out is a lot of avocado seeds will have this little um, lighter area on one side. This is the, down, oh. the downside. Um, okay. Yeah, if you're still not sure, or maybe your avocado doesn't have that, um, you can see what I've done here is I've peeled off some of the skin on the avocado seed. And you can see that there's like a little, I don't know, a little butt crack going up. <laughs> yeah. So you want to position it so that the butt crack part is at the top, and then okay. this part is, is at the bottom. OK. Yeah. So Look for the butt crack. Pardon? Look for the butt crack. <laughs> butt crack up. Okay. I used to have the avocado plant growing in my apartment. I had it for about three years. Um, they, these guys take a while before they will sprout. And I found it worked better if I started, you know, about three of these at once. And then whichever one starts growing its root first, I would just keep that one. Um, okay. The hit and the miss. 
Um, and you also won't get any av avocado uh, plant, any avocado fruits off of the plant, most likely. But is it big? Is it big and leafy when it does grow? It's big and leafy, and avocado leaves are actually used in um, as like a flavoring of some types of food, like used in Mexican food. Oh. So if you want to experiment with that, you could, you could try that too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. It kind of tastes like a baby, and you use it in a similar way. You use it to flavor sweets. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So many things I'm learning. Um, so I did, one second here. Apparently, apparently, apparently seeds are like really um, a hot commodity right now and you can order them on Amazon and um, a couple like growers, but apparently they are kind of tough to find. But um, I was able to find this one, which is Korean mint and English lavender. Mm. But one of them, so the lavender says, open pollinated untreated what does that mean do you know i'm not sure what the treated means open pollinated simply means that when these plants were allowed to to grow it was in an open it was in an open field so there's a few different varieties of lavender you have like i think there's french lavender and the singlet uh, it, yeah. Oh, in, oh, and English lavender. That's the other one. So it could be that, you know, it's called English lavender, but it might be a little bit contaminated with some French lavender. Ah, um, okay. I'm not sure what treatment they're, they're talking about there. For okay. Okay. So that's what this English, this, so this Korean mint also says open pollinated. And then I would just sprinkle these on some soil if I have it, I guess, and water it. Yeah, yeah. I'm really bad at planting. Yeah, I mean, the, the packet will probably give instructions for how deep to put the seeds. Um, for most beans, you can, you're pretty safe putting them about an inch deep into the soil. Um, it'll probably be something similar for, for mint and lavender, half an inch to an inch deep. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited. I'm going to make this a project that I do with Ayla and I will be posting my pictures. So I encourage everybody else that starts whenever you start, go ahead and post your pictures so we can encourage each other to to keep sprouting. Um, a quick announcement is um, doing a one week meal plan that will help people during um, this quarantine isolation time. So if you sign up for my newsletter, I will be sending that out tonight. But if you're not watching this uh, on Sunday, then you can certainly sign up for the newsletter and I'll be doing it uh, again next week and I'll send the previous week's meal plan. So to sign up for my newsletter, you just go to my website, suzannestable.ca and there's actually a tab there that says get the newsletter. Apart from that, I just wanna say such we're so appreciative, Vanessa, that you came on. And uh, I know a lot of parents were are scrambling to find activities to do with their little ones. And and um, I don't have a green thumb, and I'm really in need of help. So we'll see. We'll see how I do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun, and um, I'm actually really glad I did it too because you know I think I'm going to move some of these plants especially the green onion onto my balcony when it when it warms up a bit in the month. Um, so I have something growing there over the summer. It's, it's, yeah, it's really nice. It um, makes you feel like you're outdoors when you might not always be able to go outdoors. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Awesome, well, thank you so much. We'll post all the information after this video so everyone can get the information needed. Yeah, and I'll keep an eye on the Facebook group. If there's any questions, feel, of course, we have a couple more minutes left um on here so feel free to post them right in this chat uh or post them to sue's facebook group and i'll check in on it and try to answer those questions okay um awesome so maybe i'll just close this window now and then um feel free for anybody to to ask questions we'll be around today and throughout the rest of the week and the weeks to come so there's no timeline on this yeah Okay, take care everybody. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.